Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm Ernest Super, and I'm thrilled to be in the Samoa kitchen with Chef Katie Cox. And uh, we're really looking forward to whipping up a great dessert. Uh, I've had the chance to participate in Dessert First for many years. And so I'm so glad I got a chance to come back and help out again. Um, my daughter uh, spent many years as a Girl Scout. She's now 19. And uh, she's helping me out in the kitchen tonight while I sit here and talk to you guys. So before we get started, I want to explain that we're having a little fundraising challenge that's happening while we bake. Oh. The kitchen now has its own keyword, has its own keyword to text during this time. So we can see who raises, which room raises the most money. All the people from the room that raised the most money will be entered into another prize drawing. If you'd like to help our kitchen, you can text Samoas to 855-980-0305. Again, if you would like to help the Samoas Kitchen, you can text Samoas to 855-980-0305. That's Samoa without the S, I'm sorry. S-A-M-O-A -A to 855 980 0305. All right, Chef Katie, let's let's get to baking. All right, hi guys. My name is Chef Katie. I am honored to have been asked to be a part of this. Um, I was a Girl Scout myself. My mom and my aunt were Girl Scouts. My grandma mother was a Girl Scout. My sister was a Girl Scout, so it definitely runs um, in the family. I was also a part of Kappa Delta sorority, and our philanthropy was Girl Scouts. So I am honored to be here. Um, just a couple of things to start off. Everyone's ovens should be ready to go at 315, 315 degrees ready to go. And hopefully you already have your, um, all of your ingredients ready and measured out and your um, cream cheese is room temperature, super important. So um, another thing I suggest is having your recipe card in front of you while we go through it. I'm gonna move pretty fast um, just because of the timing that we have. So there's a very good chance that I'm not gonna be able to see everyone's finished desserts. So I want you guys to finish them afterwards, take photos, share those, hashtag um, dessert first 2020, um, or you're welcome to share them with my Instagram as well. It's at Chef Katie Cox. So all of that being said, have your recipe card in front of you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, because we have people monitoring that and Ernest is gonna monitor that so we can ask those questions as we go along. So if you have questions, put them in the chat. If you wanna unmute and ask, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, but with so many people, it might be easier to just do it through the chat. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna start with our crust. So everyone should go ahead and have your um, muffin tin ready to go with your liners in it. So I'm being super resourceful and I'm using my old Halloween pumpkin liners ready to go that my mom sent me. I didn't get a chance to bake any um, over Halloween. So I'm gonna take, a, take a advantage of it now. So we're doing the crust first, okay? So again, any questions, put them in the chat. So we are starting with our four full graham crackers. So this is what I mean by full. So this would be one. So four of these, four of your Samoa Girl Scout cookies, and then two tablespoons of melted butter. If you're doing this in the food processor, go ahead and throw it all in, all together. If you're doing it in a plastic bag, then I recommend just putting in your crackers and your cookies first. Crush that up with your rolling pin. Um, get it really, really fine. And then you can go ahead and put your butter in. But again, if you're doing it in the food processor, like myself, you can go ahead and put your butter in with it. I'm gonna put this on. We're gonna pulse this and crush it up. We want this pretty fine. So we're gonna go for about a minute here.
Chef Katie, your your food processor is a little fancier than my Cuisinart. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> up nice and fine. We are going to put it into our picky shells. So I think I put on the recipe card that you want two tablespoons. We're going to do about a tablespoon. So this crust is exactly enough to fit in all 12 of these cupcake liners. So distribute evenly. I would recommend starting with about a spoonful into each one. Make sure this is nice and fine. If it's not, keep grinding. So we're going for... And you're saying one tablespoon instead of two. Yeah, let's start with one. That way we know we have enough for all 12 because this crust is the exact amount recipe for all 12 of these liners. So we'll start with one. And then we, if we have leftovers, then we can add them in and distribute evenly. So once we get all of this distributed into all 12. We're going to push down on this crust so it's nice and tight in the bottom of the cupcake liner just like a crust would be. So I've got that all in there and I'm just going to take my hands and push down really hard each cupcake liner so it's nice and tight. Can we use our spoon or do we need to use our hands? I mean, come on, Ernest. You got to get dirty in the kitchen. You got to use your hands. All right, all right. <laughs> if you use your hands, you can really get into the corners there and really okay. push it down nice and deep. All right. I would recommend even going back through each one and give them, giving it one more push just to make sure it's nice and tight. All right. Once we have those all set, this is going into the oven 10 minutes. So I'm going to set my timer so we can get these going. All right, we are moving right along. So next up, I want you to grab your coconut. We're going to do our toasted coconut. So I, I put half a bag on there. I love toasted coconut. Half a bag is a lot though. Um, if you want to do half a bag and keep some for later throughout the week, you can put some on some shrimp or something like that. You're welcome to do the whole bag. Um, but I'm going to do about a quarter of the bag here. So we're putting this out on our sheet tray. No need to put anything underneath. It's not going to stick to the sheet tray because there's so much fat in this coconut. Okay. So don't worry about putting anything underneath. So this is going on our sheet tray and we're going to pop this in the oven. I'll tell you when to check on it. We're going to check on our coconut probably every three minutes or so. Once it starts to get toasted, it's going to go quick. So we got to keep an eye on it. All right, next up, I want everybody to get their mixer ready with their cream cheese. So hopefully you had a chance to let your cream cheese sit out for a little bit and come to room temperature. The reason we want our cream cheese to be room temperature is we're making cheesecake, right? So this cheesecake, we want it to be nice and smooth and creamy. So we want it to be warm so it all melts together. Think about it as the opposite of a pie crust. So when you make pie crust, you want your butter to be ice cold, right? That's so that when it melts in the oven, it becomes nice and flaky. If this is cold going in, it's going to make your cheesecake crack a little bit. Totally fine, but for the, the creaminess and to make that smooth cheesecake, you want to make sure it's nice and room temperature. So our cream cheese, we are going to mix for three minutes just by itself with our mixer. So I've got a hand mixer and I'm going to turn it over to Ernest for a little bit of Trivia for three minutes, not a second longer, Ernest. We're on. Okay. Okay, got I got you. Three minutes. Three <laughs> minutes of mute, trivia. So I'm gonna mute so I don't. Bother. All right. So um, Chef Katie is a little ahead of me. I just got in um, my uh, crust, and we'll be doing the um, the coconut 
a little later, I think, but um, I'm glad she's uh, ahead of us. So uh, who is interested in trivia? Uh, put your uh, answers in, in the chat. Uh, we'll start with uh, a simple one. What is the youngest level of Girl Scouts? They all, everybody's getting that one. That was too easy. What is the oldest level of Girl Scouts? Yes. It is not senior, it is ambassador, ambassador. What year was the first documented council-wide cookie sale of commercially baked cookies? Oh, I got, nope, nope, not, not 1915, not 1908, not 1954. Wait, wait, Karen. Karen S, 1934, that is correct. Very good. All right, here's one you should all know. Who founded the Girl Scouts? That's funny, Tammy, 19 something, yes. Who founded the Girl Scouts? Very good, Michelle Z. Good, Marion and Mimi Rich. Annabelle, Shelly, everyone's getting that, yes. Juliet Gordon Lowe. Where was Juliet Gordon Lowe born? Savannah, good, Amanda. Yes, Savannah, Georgia. Who was the first registered Girl Scout? Her niece. Oh, Marion, Marion and Mimi Rich. They're nailing these. Excellent. All right. All right. I'm going to take over again, but I'm going to throw it back to you once we put good, on these ingredients good. for two minutes. Okay. So once you have your cream cheese all mixed up for a solid three minutes, we're going to put everything else into our cream cheese batter. Okay. Our cheesecake batter. So we're going with half of a cup of sugar. Dump it right in there. We're doing half a cup of sour cream right into the bowl. We are doing one egg. Hopefully you had a chance to let your egg come to room temperature a little bit just so we can keep it nice and creamy. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, Chef Katie, why does yes. the egg have to be room temperature? So same that surprised me. Yeah, so same reason as everything else. So it'll prevent cracking in the cheesecake. So if you've ever seen a cheesecake and the top of it kind of has some cracks in it, it's just because the ingredients were probably cold. Oh, really interesting. Yeah. So next we're going with one teaspoon of lemon juice, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. Now take one second before we mix this up and check on that coconut. Can you please repeat that? Yes. Yes, so your, repeat the ingredients for the cheesecake. Yes, everything you just put in the bowl with the cream cheese. Yes, so we're doing half a cup of sugar, half a cup of sour cream, one egg, one teaspoon of lemon juice, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and a pinch of salt. So go ahead, before we mix this up, go ahead and check on your coconut. So what it should look like is the outer edges should be starting to get a little bit tan. So we want to get it all mixed up because if we don't, those outer edges are going to burn before the middle gets toasted. So we're going to get this all mixed up and we're going to put it back in and we'll check it again in about three minutes. Nice even layer, spread it all the way out on your tray. 
And then we're going to mix up our batter. So we are going for another two minutes, which is also the timing I have on my crust. So it should be perfect. So Ernest, take it away for two minutes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's do a little more trivia. What does SWAPS stand for? That's a good question. Anyone know what SWAPS? SWAPS as an acronym? Oh, have I come up with a question no one knows? SWAPS. SWAPS. There it is. Amy and Taj. Very good. Very good, Jen. Special, whatchamacallit, affectionately pinned somewhere. Swaps are a small gift a Girl Scout creates to exchange with another Girl Scout they met while traveling as a token of friendship. Very good. All right. Um, So while we're waiting for uh, Chef Katie to mix that up, does anyone have any questions for her? Um, you can put them in the chat, and when she jumps back on, we can uh, we can ask the questions. What is the text number? Okay, I have that right here. Again, um, we are trying to um, raise donations as a Samoa's Kitchen. And our number is, if you want to donate, text SAMOA to 855-980-0305. All right, any, how's everybody doing? Do I have any questions so far? Everybody got their batter mixed up? Yes, I, I, I hear the standing mixer in the kitchen next to me, so yeah. <laughs> I think my sous chef is doing an excellent job. Perfect. All right, so that's the timer for our crust. So let's go ahead and take our crust out of the oven. We'll give our coconut one more minute before mixing it up. But what I do want you to do at this time is turn your temperature on your oven down to 300. So we're going to be at 300 for our cheesecake. I have a question. How long should we keep the coconut in the oven again? I know her. Yes, good question. So your coconut is going to take about 10 minutes. We want to mix it about every three minutes. So once you start to see it toasted like an amber color, that's the time that you want to go in and mix it up. Because what will happen is the top tips are going to start to toast but the underneath is gonna stay white. So we gotta go in, mix it all up so it's nice and even, okay? Thank you. If you can see in my hand, I pre-toasted some, I'm not sure if you can see the color or not, but this is the color we're going for. So essentially we want it all to be nice and crispy and toasty. Would I say it, would we say it looks a little like brown rice, Chef Katie? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good comparison, a good color for it. Yeah. Hey, we had a question in the chat. Yes. Uh, what is the biggest mistake people make in baking? The biggest mistake people make in baking, I would say it would be rushing, which is funny because that's what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say rushing. Um, so in culinary school, we would always talk about in baking class, baking is all about hurry up and wait. So what that means is, you're hurrying up, you're making the batter, but then you gotta put it in the oven and wait. So you gotta hurry up and make the crust, but then you gotta put it in the oven and wait. So it's a lot of hurry up and wait. So you have to have that patience of letting everything kind of settle and get to where it's supposed to be. So I would say the biggest thing is rushing, especially if you think about like fresh breads and things like that. Like, I don't wanna let it proof for 20 minutes. I wanna keep going. So mm -hmm. I would say that's probably the biggest mistake people make. So, hey, check out my mixing bowl, chef. I'm, my sous chef is cooking with gas. It's gorgeous. It looks good. Yes. Thank All you. All right. So, everybody has their beautiful crust out of the oven. 
So we are going to put our batter on top of our crust. So a couple things to note when we're doing this. This batter, just like the crust, is the exact amount we need for all 12 of these. So your goal is to make them all perfectly even, okay? One little hint, if you have it, which I don't even have one, I have a two ounce, but if you have a ladle, like a scoop, a soup ladle, if you have a one and a half ounce ladle, we're looking at about a one and a half ounce pour on all of these. But what I would do is start with maybe halfway, go up halfway on each, and then the leftover batter you can add in. So we're gonna start adding our batter. You had a ladle. Our, once I get about halfway through, I'm gonna check on our coconut. So everyone's ovens right now should be at 300 degrees for these cheesecakes. Our coconut is toasting in the oven. And next up, we're gonna make our caramel. So again, only go about halfway on these. They are gonna rise a little bit. And what happens with cheesecake is it's gonna settle once it comes out of the oven. But we don't want it to rise up over our um, cupcake liner. Any questions so far? Everybody's in the same spot. Everybody's doing good. Yeah, what happens if I spill some on the side? It, it'll burn, but I would, I would just wipe it up with a paper towel because it'll just get a little dark. It's not a big deal. Okay. I always, that's like when I was a kid, that's the part I would always lick off with my finger, right? And then eat it. A, so I was I'm always bit, happy when we would spill some. I'm a bit clumsy, Chef Katie. So. I'm, the, I'm the same way. Hang in there with me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I have just enough batter to make all of these nice and even. We're going to put these in the oven and we're going to take out our coconut and give it one more stir. And then we're going to start on my favorite part, the caramel. All right. This is so like Ernest said, if you have any spills over here on any of the edges, just wipe that up with a paper towel. It will burn, but it's not, it's not a big deal. It'll just, you'll just get a little burnt smell, but it's not your actual cheesecake. So just use a paper towel, wipe that up, going in the oven, and then I'm gonna take out my coconut and give it one more mix. Hey, I want you guys to know that Chef Katie isn't just somebody who decided to call herself Chef Katie. Chef Katie graduated from the Cordon Bleu Culinary Institute. And not only did she graduate from there, she was the valedictorian. That's amazing, Chef Katie. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, so I pulled my coconut out of the oven. So if you guys can see this, see how my edges are toasted, but the middle is still very raw and chewy. So I'm going to give this whole thing a nice big mix. And you guessed it, we're going back in the oven. All right, so for those of you following along at home, next up, we're going to work on our caramel sauce. There will be a little bit of downtime during the caramel sauce, Ernest, just to give you a heads up. Uh huh. It'll take a little bit of time. So I'm out of trivia ready. questions, so. Trivia, yes. All right, so we're gonna get this all mixed up, give it a little shake to spread it out. And we're going back in the oven. All right, next up. We're gonna set up our caramel. So, a couple of things with our caramel sauce. I want a quick show of hands. How many people have ever made homemade caramel sauce? Show of hands. Not right me. Now, I see three. I see three and lots of no, oh, four, lots of no's. Okay, so caramel sauce. So, a couple of things about it. I'm going, for the sake of time, I'm gonna do my caramel sauce in this big pan here. What that means is it's gonna have the potential to burn a lot faster because there's way more surface area. I'm gonna do mine in here just so you guys can see the finished product. 
if you're comfortable doing it in a pan this big, you gotta keep an eye on it, but go for it. It's gonna do it a lot faster. If you're, if you're a little more weary about it, I would suggest either a smaller saute pan or even a saucepan like this, okay? So those are your options. Like I said, if you're a little more unsure, use something a little smaller because it'll give you more time to watch it because there's less surface area. If you wanna go for it and keep an eye on it, use a big one like this, okay? All right, so first thing we're putting in three tablespoons of water, okay? Next up, we are putting in a quarter cup of sugar. So when you put in your sugar, put it right in the center. You don't want it on the edges. So we're gonna put it right in the center. And what we're gonna do is swirl. So we're not moving this around with our whisk yet. Don't even have any utensils in your hand. We're gonna swirl like this, nice and easy to spread out that sugar, okay? This is gonna be over a medium high heat. And again, we are not touching that with any sort of utensil. No whisk, no um, spatula, nothing. We're just gonna swirl until it melts into the water. And what we're looking for is an amber color. So similar to our toasted coconut. Speaking of which, I'm gonna pull the toasted coconut and check on it again. We are super close on this. So you can see, again, my edges are toasted, but my middle is still super raw and white. So we're gonna give it one more mix, and I would say one more time in the oven is gonna be good. So make sure we get those edges in there all mixed together or else they're gonna burn. All right, give it a nice swirl back in the oven. So what we're looking for on our caramel, again, we are only swirling. So we're not going at this with a whisk or anything yet. So we're swirling, we're gonna let our sugar dissolve. And we're going on a medium high heat. One little chef trick. I will give you a little pro tip. If you have, keep a little bit of, a little bowl of water next to your pan with a pastry brush. So what you can do is if you get sugar up on the sides of your pan, dip your brush into the water and, and put it around the sides of your pan to get that sugar to come back into the mixture. If you have any pieces of sugar up on the sides of your pan, it's not gonna get mixed into your caramel and what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be a little bit grainy. All right, so we want the idea is for all that sugar to dissolve right into that water so it's nice and smooth and luxur luxurious, okay? So if you do have sugar going up on your sides, take a brush with some water and just brush it like you're painting along the edges of your pan to get that sugar to come back into the mixture, okay? So while I'm doing a swirling over here, I'm gonna let this come to a nice amber color. I have my heavy cream, my butter, and my vanilla on standby because as soon as this comes to a, that amber color, my heavy cream is going in and it's gonna be like lightning. We gotta move at lightning speed as soon as that happens. So I'm gonna go over to Ernest, while my caramel starts to become that amber color, I'm gonna keep an eye on my coconut. You do the same, keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. And then I'll steal it away from Ernest right when I'm, right before I put in that heavy cream, okay? Okay, great. Um, yeah, I have my sous chef working on that. And um, how's, every, how's it going for everyone? Is it going okay? Chef Katie, why, why, why not just buy some caramel from the store? What, what's the advantage of having homemade caramel? So there's a couple of different things. So I've been cooking. I was in um, corporate restaurants for the last 10 years. I left uh, this past summer 
and I've been cooking a lot at home and just doing my own thing. There's so many things that you can make at home that are so much better than store-bought, and it makes you wonder why you ever bought store-bought. So one of those things is dressings, right? So homemade dressings, homemade ranch dressing, homemade Caesar dressing. If you've ever have a chance to make them at home, do it, set up a taste test between the two, and then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Another thing would be hummus. If you ever have a chance to make homemade hummus, taste your homemade hummus next to your store-bought and you'll be able to tell the difference. Same oh, with the caramel, okay? Okay. All right, so if you get a look at mine, we're starting to bubble, but I'm not getting that amber color yet. So I'm still just swirling. I'm not putting any utensils in, but I'm gonna keep going. That's good, Mackenzie just... Yeah, Mackenzie just asked in the chat, should it be bubbling? So that yes. answers your uh, question, Mackenzie. Yes. Yeah, I, I asked that question because I was going to cheat and go to the store and just buy some. So. Well, it's funny. I was talking to my mom before I did this and just going through the caramel recipe to see if she's ever made it before. And she, she said she used to use the little caramel drops, like the caramel squares, and melt yeah. those down with some milk. So that's another kind of like a semi-homemade secret. All right, so once you start to get that amber color, you really gotta watch it because it's gonna go from amber to burnt like that, all right? And I did take my coconut out of the oven. So don't forget about that coconut. This is what we're looking for. So nice toasty color and you can tell it's crunchy. So you should hear that crunch as opposed to that raw flavor, okay? All right, maybe about 30 seconds on this caramel. I've got my heavy cream on standby. Heavy cream is going in first. So if there's younger people at home doing this, I would recommend letting um, the adults do this part. But the heavy cream, it's gonna bubble and foam a little bit. Um, but we're going to swirl it in really quick, okay? I know it might be super tempting, too, to taste that caramel right away. Don't do it, all right? It's that too hot, right? Very, very hot sugar, very, very high temperature. So don't taste your caramel until probably about 10 minutes or so until it's cooled down all the way, all right? I got about... 20 seconds, how's everybody doing out there? Thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down. Thumbs up for me. Lots of thumbs ups, awesome. Hey, Abby says she's not getting the amber color. Okay, so if you're using the smaller pan, it's gonna take longer because you don't have as much surface area. So I'm using the big pan, mine's gonna be quicker, um, just so I can show you guys. So if you're using the small pan, be patient. Remember we talked about earlier, that's one of the biggest mistakes in baking is trying to rush, okay? So take your time, let it come to that amber color. Mackenzie asks, can hot caramel curdle your heavy whipped cream? So with this one, that's an awesome question. I wanna say the answer is no, just because it's such a high temperature that it's gonna instantly melt, you know what I mean? And we're gonna swirl it in there. But that's a, that's a really good question. I know one of the goals was to stump me, so you might have done it. <laughs> All right, so this is my amber color. I'm going to go quick with my heavy cream. So it's show time. All right, everybody sees that color? Similar to the color on my coconut. I'm going in with half a cup of heavy cream. Okay. Lots of bubbles. I've got my whisk on standby, ready to go. And I'm going in with my butter, almost immediately with the butter, okay? And we're gonna swirl this in, and you really wanna rub the whisk along the bottom of the pan and get up all those little bits of flavor, all that gooiness. I'm going in with my vanilla extract. So the goal here is to um mix quickly all right so you want this all to come together so we're mixing and again be careful don't get this up on your hands or anything don't let it splash it's gonna burn you 
Hey, Linda says, did you say half a cup of cream? Yes, half a cup of heavy cream. Yes, Linda, half oh, a cup. I'm sorry, quarter, sorry. Quarter. Uh, oh, oh, quarter cup. Sorry, sorry, quarter sorry. Cup. So the, the cool thing about this caramel is if you put a little bit too much heavy cream, you're gonna be fine. It's just gonna be a little bit creamier and more lux luxurious, right? So you're totally fine if you did have a cup, don't worry about it, it's gonna be great. Hey, I wanna remind you guys that you can make a donation, uh, text uh, Samoa to 855-980-0305. Right now we are in third place behind Thin Mints and Tagalongs. So let's see if we can we can pick that up because if we're the top room, everyone in the room gets a prize. Thank you for that update, Lori. All right, so how's everybody doing? Where are we at on our caramel? Still waiting for it to get amber? That is A-OK. -okay. Take your time, be patient. We still got some time on the cheesecake as well. So what I wanna do is turn it into the magic cooking show, right? And I'm gonna show you some cheesecakes that I already have ready to go, all right? There you go, and, and we'll just show like you how Food to... Network. Exactly. I grew, I grew up on Food Network, so I know all the tricks of the trade. All right, so again, a couple things to note. All right, so this is some caramel sauce that I made earlier today. So I want you guys to look at it. How's it look? Not great, right? What's wrong with it? Grainy? You guys are thick. muted. Grainy and thick? It is thick, it's not grainy. So there's actually nothing wrong with it. It just came to room temperature, right? So, this, so don't panic. This is what your caramel is going to look like when it sits at room temperature. Similar to if you bought a, you know, like a commercial big jar of caramel, it's going to get thick like this. Pop it in the microwave. We'll go about 10 seconds and it'll make it nice and creamy and luxurious just like it was. Gorgeous. So I'll show you. Pop it in the microwave. Give it a nice stir so some of your fat has separated. And there we've got our nice caramel sauce. Okay, brought it back to life. So cheesecakes. Couple thing with your with your cheesecakes. When your cheesecakes come out of the oven. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is let them cool. So we wanna let them cool for about five to 10 minutes until you can really get in there and touch them and pull them out, okay? So we're gonna let them sit for a little bit until we can actually pull the cupcake liners out themselves, put them on a wire rack or a sheet tray and let them cool. These guys have to pretty much cool completely before we can pop them out of the cupcake liner itself. If I try to pull these cheesecakes out of the cupcake liner before they're cool, they're gonna fall apart, okay? So I've got some cheesecakes ready to go. They've already been cooled. So look at these gorgeous little mini cheesecake bites with our Samoa crust. So can I ask these, you a quick, can I ask you a quick yes. question that's in the chat? Yes. Mackenzie asks, do you take it off? I guess she means the burner when you add in the heavy whipped cream. Yes, yes ma'am, awesome question. So yes, we are gonna take it off the burner and stir in our cream. Awesome question. Once that cream, had several good questions tonight. Yes, once that cream is mixed in, that's when we're going in with our butter and our vanilla. So keep mixing nice and quick, okay? So our cheesecake, so this is how they're gonna look, nice and cool out of the oven, okay? I'm gonna go on top with my caramel sauce. So I'm gonna mix this up. So you can grab either a fork or a spoon, whatever floats your boat. And what you can do is pull it up on top of the, you're gonna pull it up on top of your bowl and then drag it over your cheesecake, just for presentation, if you want it to look like that nice, 
um, stringy caramel, okay? So we're gonna drizzle this back and forth on our cheesecake. So this is where you get to have fun, right? If you want, you can put a dollop right in the center. If you want more cheesecake, less cheesecake, then we're going in with our toasted coconut right on top. And for the added touch, you gotta have some extra pieces of Samoa on there, right? That's the best part. So throw those on there. All right, and this is gonna be your final presentation. So what we can do is make these, I would suggest doing your caramel sauce, drizzle back and forth, toasted coconut, samoas. You can set out a plate of these. So you guys are gonna have 12 after today. So these are nice little simple cheesecake bites and they're little. So you can put these out on a spread for dessert, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, and everybody can kind of bring a potluck, you know, everybody can have a little bit of everything. All right, I'm gonna check on my cheesecakes. So, so one little trick with your cheesecakes. I forgot to set a timer for my cheesecakes, okay? How do I know when they're done? How do we know when the cheesecakes are done? Anybody have an idea? You can unmute and say it. They're, they're gonna be a little golden color. We're not, look looking color for, we're not, not looking legally. for a lot of color. We don't want a lot of color on these. Oh, if we color, they're too, say it again. But if they're not wiggling. Oh, not wiggling, whoever said that is correct. So how do we know if cake is done? A toothpick, toothpick. toothpick comes out clean. Toothpick comes out clean. Are we putting a toothpick in our cheesecake? That's what Karen Spangler said. If we put a if we put a toothpick in these cheesecakes, that's going to form a crack. So you're welcome to do that, but you're going to have a crack right down the center of one of your cheesecakes. Okay. The best way to know when these are done. Get open your oven, give the pan a little shake, a little jiggle, and you shouldn't see any more jiggling, okay? So hey. I'll pull it out so you can see. Hey, Katie, let me ask. Uh, yes. a, a couple of people in the chat have noted that, uh, that one says the caramel is separating in a weird way, and uh, Tammy says it's a bit light. Okay. Is so that okay if it's a bit light? It's totally okay. You're still going to have that caramel flavor it's just not going to be as deep if that makes sense so you'll it's still going to be a good caramel it's just not going to have the flavor as if it was a little bit more amber before the heavy cream went in does that make sense mm -hmm. julie says her caramel is melting slower like it's like it's not becoming amber fast enough that's totally fine so just keep going with the the water and the sugar mixture. So the cool okay. thing about this recipe is it's small, right? It's not a lot of caramel because it's just enough to cover these 12. So I would recommend playing with it and experimenting. So that's one thing I love to do in the kitchen. So what I'll do is take a recipe that I've seen and I'll do it the first time. If it didn't come out right, I'll do it the exact same the second time and just really watch over the ingredients and make sure I'm doing it right. If it's still not right, then I'll, I'll start to switch things up, right? So one thing with this caramel recipe really is just the time, the timing. So that's the hardest thing because you gotta be patient enough to get it that nice amber golden brown color. But if you don't, if you put your heavy cream in before it's that color, you're gonna have a very light caramel, which is totally fine. So if you look at caramels across the board, probably even if you Googled caramel, you're gonna see all kinds of different shades. So that's yeah. totally fine. But if so, you go too far, then it's, you're gonna have that burnt flavor and you can't come back from that burnt flavor. So less is probably a little bit better. Yeah. So real quick, we have three people in the chat who say it got stuck to their whisk. Any advice for them? The, the caramel stuck to the whisk. Did you yeah. go in with the butter and the heavy cream? And it's still sticking. Yeah, uh, Amy Metz says maybe they let it get too hot and that's why it got stuck to the whisk. 
Yeah, so there's a couple, yeah, so there's a couple different things. I see Joanna, yeah, I see. Okay, so, <laughs> so like I said, what I would do, this recipe is super small, right? It's not a lot of ingredients. Just, if it didn't work out, think about, read through the recipe card that I gave, that was sent out to you guys, and really go step by step. So I think part of it is, we're just putting the sugar in the water in first, right? And you have to let that sugar melt into the water. So if we're not letting our sugar dissolve into the water, then the sugar itself is gonna mix with the heavy cream and that's where you're gonna get those particles. That's where it's gonna get stuck. So you gotta let your sugar dissolve into the water. All right, so Moa's has taken the lead among Woo! the donations, so that's terrific. Um, yeah, Delilah, woohoo! I see you jumping up and down. Linda, Linda asked, how long did you say to let the cheesecake cool before taking it out of the cupcake yeah, line? awesome question. So back to the cheesecake. So I have mine out of the oven. If you look, I don't know if you can see or not, but I'm jiggling. Nothing's happening. So I'm good to go, okay? So a couple things. We're going to let our cheesecake cool in the container for at least a minimum of five minutes, but we're gonna wanna go at least five to 10 minutes. The more we handle them while they're hot, the more they're gonna fall apart. So we wanna be patient, right? That's that hurry up and wait, okay? So we gotta be patient, let them cool. Have you ever tried to frost a cake that was still warm? I do it all the time because I'm impatient, okay? So you gotta let it cool, pull them out. So you're gonna take the, them out with the cupcake liners, Take them out and put them on your wire rack and then let them cool completely. You can totally put them in the fridge at that point too. That'll speed up the process and it won't mess up the, the cheesecake itself. They won't mess up the texture. So once they're cool, then we can go in with the caramel. I want to see some caramel sauces. Did anybody show them yeah, to the uh, camera? Joanna asked, how can you get the caramel off the whisk? Is You got a solution there or are we looking at trying again. Is that, I'm looking at Delilah's, it looks really good if I can see correctly. Um, yeah, so uh, is it Esther Rivera? Looks like you didn't go long enough. Did you already put in the butter? Okay, so so we went to, we, we rushed it, right? We didn't let it get amber enough because it's way too, you can see that it's caramel, but it's just way too light, okay? So like I said, this is this is fun though, because this is the best part. I see Mackenzie looks a little thick, okay? So make sure, just double check those measurements. So you got a quarter cup of heavy cream, four tablespoons of butter, that's a lot of butter, and half a teaspoon of vanilla. So just double check your measurements and keep it going. I would say, I love, all, I love this though. This is definitely a complicated recipe um, with the whisk. So what you can do is, a couple of things. One, you can just let it sit and scrub it. Not fun, right? Another thing is take your whisk and heat it. So you've got your pan going with a, you can heat up some hot water and in a, like a saucepan and then kind of whisk it off. It'll just kind of fall off of the whisk. Um, so that's another option. Yeah, because Delilah said her, her caramel burned. Okay. So. Delilah, I'm so sorry. So to see, this is the tricky part about <laughs> this is the tricky part about the virtual classes, right? I can't be there to kind of stand over your shoulder and help you guys. But I love it. I love the participation. I love seeing everyone's work. Like I said, I want you guys to take pictures. I want every. That's the goal. I want everybody to take a picture. Put it on social media, hashtag Dessert First 2020. You can hashtag Samoa, Team Samoa. Um, my Instagram is at Chef Katie Cox. If you want to send it to me, I would love to post them. I want to see everybody's work. Um, did anyone... We're ready for our screenshot. So no. if you, did you want to screenshot us, did you say? I don't know how. I could no, do it with my not. phone. Like we're making, we're still making our caramel. Like we're all in on this thing. It looks amazing. We really appreciate everything you guided us through. This is terrific. Oh, thank you. I love it. I will take a yeah. quick shot with my phone. I don't. Know everybody how look. Everybody look. Like, all right. Okay. Everybody ready look. Ready for our screenshot. All right. One, <laughs> two, three. 
All right, I did a few. Also, Beautiful. Like, yeah, thank you, whoever said that. Uh, Laura Webb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Ready for their close up. Yeah. So I'll show you mine again, just so you can kind of see the goal. So again, we're going to wait. That's the hard part. Oh, that that, that, the that is literally, down. that's exactly what ours look like. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I love it. But like so, I said, if you feel like the, so the cheesecakes should be pretty, you should be good to go on the cheesecakes. Like there shouldn't be any troubles with the cheesecakes. So if your cheesecakes came out perfect, but your caramel got a little messed up, you have options, right? You can do your caramel over and start it again, or you can sneak some chocolate sauce, some Hershey's chocolate sauce from the fridge and drizzle that on top and then go with your coconut, right? Because there's chocolate in the Samoas too. So we're staying, on, we're staying on our recipe with our Samoas if we do chocolate. So and another option too with the caramel, if your caramel worked out, sprinkle some sea salt on there, salted caramel, one of my favorite things. So a couple, a lot of options with this. Um, but like I said, the cheesecake itself, you've got the Samoas in there. So if your caramel didn't work out, toast a coconut on top with some of your chopped up Samoas and it's gonna be delicious. And I guess part of the idea is to create a sensation so that both the top and the bottom are giving you that Samoa taste. Yes, absolutely. Yes, makes perfect sense. Can I see some people's coconut? How do we do on the coconut? Let's see some of that toasted coconut. Oh, Marion and Mimi, those, that looks awesome. Jillian, I love it. Abby, that's gorgeous. Joanna. So good. Annabelle, I love it. Karen, they look so good, guys. So now you know how to toast coconut. So I don't know if anybody likes shrimp, but one of my favorite things is um, coconut shrimp. So you guys can make that tomorrow if you have some leftover coconut. So lots of options here. But now you guys have a very basic cheesecake recipe that you can use. So like I said, you can go all different ways with this. So you can put some raspberries and cherries on top, throw some ice cream with it, and you're good to go. And these are totally fat-free, correct? Totally fat-free, totally. <laughs> I'm about to go eat all 12 of them, so it's fine. There you go. Yeah. Can you tell us the hashtags again, please? So, there, so the hashtag is Dessert First 2020. And then you can tag um, the Girl Scouts of Southwest Florida. Their Instagram is GSWCF. So Thank all the first letters. So Girl Scouts of West Central Florida, GSWCF. That's their Instagram. My Instagram is um, at Chef Katie Cox. Awesome, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I think I think we're gonna be in the room for um, a couple of more minutes. But so so mine is warm, Katie. Is it in? The, are you still in the wrapper? Can you see? Yes. Okay. I so haven't taken if you're it out. perfect, so if you're warm and you're still in the wrapper, you gotta wait. You gotta let it cool all the way down. Okay. So okay. You're welcome to pop them in the fridge. That'll speed up the process and it won't really mess with your texture. So you can pop them in the fridge and then once they're cooled all the way down, then you're going to carefully take them out of the wrapper. I have some still in the wrapper. I'll show you guys. When you take them out the wrapper, you use a knife, a spoon, or you just flip nope. it out. You can just pop them out. So I have some still in the wrapper. I'll show you guys. So these were in the fridge, right? So once they're cool, they will just easily separate oh, right okay. off of the wrapper. So pull down, keep your crust intact. Maybe give it a little squeeze. Good to go. Okay, I'll do another one. This one's stuck. Can you freeze them? Yeah, so 
you can freeze these. I would recommend freezing them out of the wrapper. So take them out of your cupcake wrapper and then just make sure they're sealed tight and you can freeze them. I wouldn't go longer than probably a month or so. But yeah, you can definitely freeze these. You know, Chef, I, I feel like I learned something tonight. Okay, what was it? <laughs> Maybe I can do this. Maybe, 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 maybe my culinary skills aren't as horrible as I, I think they are. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of follow the instructions and pay attention. Yeah. So I tried to pick with this recipe, I tried to pick something that would be easy enough for everyone to follow along, but still had that challenging element. So that's why I picked the caramel sauce. So that it's still something that a lot of people haven't done. And you guys told me, I think only four of you had made caramel at home. So mm -hmm. I tried to pick something you have never done before, which was hopefully the caramel sauce, but then still an easy recipe with the cheesecake and the crust and the coconut that you still have an awesome product at the end. Yeah, when, when, when I was reviewing the recipe, I knew the caramel would be the challenge. That's the tricky part, yep. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Any other questions? Oh, I love them, Linda. Those are gorgeous. Awesome. So, Chef, I noticed you are from uh, originally from West Virginia. I am. Does that, uh, growing up there, does that influence your, your culinary style and, and what you like to prepare? I think so. So I have a couple of different influences um, with my cooking style, but growing up in West Virginia is definitely one of them. West Virginia, where I grew up, is pretty Southern, um, believe it or not. So that's funny because my mom is on here, so I know she's going to call me after this and talk to me about everything I said. But my mom grew up cooking with, you know, Crisco and things like that. We always had, my dad always had dessert on the table. We always had dessert on the table. Um, so I definitely have that Southern background. I went to school at Le Cordon Bleu, so I have that French background with the heavy cream and the butter and the richness. But then I worked for Seasons 52 for 10 years. So Seasons 52, everything on the menu was healthy. Everything under, everything was under 595 calories. So I have that side of me as well too, that everything is a little more on the healthy side. So I like to say I have the best of both worlds. So okay. I have that rich heaviness, the flavor, but I also have the healthy aspect of it. Um, so I kind of like to mend those together and put my own twist on things. Nice. So that's why, so if you think about it, if you think about this recipe and my background, they're mini, right? So they're super decadent with all the cheesecake and the caramel, but they're mini. <laughs> so you don't have to have a whole cheesecake. You can just have a bite and, a, and be satisfied, right? So that's Similar to the desserts, you can get at Seasons 52. Exactly. Yep. The little glasses, yes. Yep. And it, it's hey. funny, too, because of the name of the dessert first. That was always my mom's motto growing up, right? Always Good. eat dessert first. Because you gotta, you're going to get full so fast. you got to have the best part first at the beginning of the meal, the dessert. Uh, Tammy and Tori Tanner would like to know what is your favorite cookie? I'm assuming they mean Girl Scout cookie. I mean, hello. <laughs> I actually, definitely Samoa. So I actually got my, it's funny because, all right, we only, we only use. All right, we're, we're going back to the main room. Oh, yeah. We're about to leave yep. in 10 seconds. We'll see you guys back there. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Awesome job. Good job, guys. Thank you.